They always happen at the worst possible time. Right when you were seeing some gains, you get that weird tinge in your shoulder or back. The next day you can barely move and your killer workout routine is suddenly on indefinite hiatus. And nine times out of 10, the injury wasn't because you were going for a personal best. Rather, it was because you were bored or saw some new exercise that you wanted to try because some dude at the gym was doing it. So let's go over those exercises that all men should avoid. And the cheat code? Always think of natural movements. You know, the ones we've been designed for and the ones we've been doing for centuries. All right, let's get into it. First up is any exercise that goes behind your neck. The two most popular here are the shoulder press behind the neck and the lat pull down behind the neck. With the behind the neck shoulder press, there is no measurable advantage to doing this alternative to the shoulder press exercise that is normally done in the front. That is, you won't see any gains any faster and you won't be targeting areas that you cannot target in a more traditional delt exercise. But what does happen is an increase in injury potential due to the position of your shoulders. If you look at this exercise closely, you can see that with the bar or dumbbells behind your neck, the shoulders rotate to a degree that is quite unnatural. That is, when you raise your arm straight up, the angle is about 90 degrees. But when you mimic the move of a behind the neck shoulder press, your arms actually go beyond that 90 degrees into a very unnatural position. That is very unstable for your rotator cuff. Moreover, men must push their neck forward to make room for the bar to move behind. Not only is this bad for your neck, but puts even more pressure on the rotator cuff. Most of us can generally feel the awkwardness of this move and accordingly lower the weight, which of course makes this move even less beneficial. For the lat pull down, the same reasons apply why this move should be avoided. The neck placement and the position of the arms when pulling down will put unnatural pressure on your rotator cuff and expose you to increased risk of injury. Most of us do not have flexible shoulders and many keep a lot of tension in our neck. So the last thing you want is to put unnecessary stress on those areas, especially with added weight. Similarly here, there is no real advantage to going behind your neck. And as with that shoulder press, you cannot do as much weight and the effectiveness of the move is considerably less than a lap pull down from the front. All right, second is the Smith machine. This is the squat rack that has the barbell attached that runs on fixed rails. This may be surprising to some of you as this is a very popular machine in the gym, both for squats and shoulders. And in fact, the Smith machine can be helpful when used correctly, but here's the issue. Many guys have the false belief that using the Smith machine for compound exercises like a squat or shoulder press, that injuries can actually be avoided since the movement is placing your body in a position that is more helpful. Unfortunately, the opposite is true. A free weight exercise is actually much safer due to the position of your back and the engagement of your stabilizer muscles. Free weight moves also critically have free range of motion such that your body automatically assumes a natural position. For squats in the Smith machine, it means you tend to lean your body back when doing the move. If this body position was done with the free weight squat, you'd lose all balance and likely fall backward. So the Smith machine does not allow your back to naturally move forward and instead keeps your back perfectly straight. At first glance, this may appear positive, but it's not how our bodies are designed to move. And many of us sense this when we're on the Smith machine because it just feels a little bit weird. Same applies when you're doing the shoulder press. It looks safe, but the same locked range of motion is in effect. The lack of upper torso stabilizer use makes this move very unnatural and risky. And you can even push against the rails since the barbell won't leave its position. Free weight shoulder presses are much safer, much more effective, and are really ideal. Just remember, don't do them behind your back. All right, next up is an exercise that again may be a bit surprising, the upright row and the shoulder extensions. And the main reason for this is positioning and weight. For upright rows, hand placement can be quite tricky. Typically, as you raise the bar upward, your wrists and elbows flare and flex to make the movement more natural and flowing. The challenge here is that your arms rotate internally the higher up the weight travels. This, of course, puts pressure on that rotator cuff again and can result in an impingement. What's very challenging with the upright row is the movement is in fact fairly natural. That is, pulling upward with your shoulder. This happens very often in common activities. However, it's the barbell or dumbbells and the posture positioning that add to the complication. 
Watch CrossFit or kettlebell moves and you'll notice that the posture and back position is much different to the upright row. So this move really is a bit of a hybrid. It's not in itself a move to avoid, but rather one to be very careful with. The answer is to keep the weight low, adjust your hands and elbows to avoid any sensation of pain and keep the reps fairly low. Now, same is true with the shoulder raises. These target the same muscle groups as the upright row, but with more isolation. Given that these muscles are much smaller and weaker when isolated, the solution again is to use much lighter weight. Trying to lift too much will likely end up with you kipping your body to lift the weight and therefore getting yourself into a position to overexert and compromise your body. So stick to front shoulder presses and keep the back stable and the weight low for upright rows and shoulder raises. The leg press machine. Again, very popular in the gym as you see many, many guys using the leg press. And typically there are several of these machines available in the gym. Yet it's another move that is bad mechanically for your body. Similar to the Smith machine, your body is locked into a position that restricts natural movement. The result is that the move puts an abnormal amount of stress on your lower back and knees. Like we discussed earlier, free weight squats allow for your back and hips to move in a natural way and compensate for balance. With the leg press machine, you are locked into a static position and some men will find the lower back stresses too much from this locked position. And while some will not have issues with the leg press or doing squats on the Smith machine, the gold standard for legs are free weight moves. The squat, the lunge, calf raises and more. They are 100% natural moves and there are a ton of variations that can be incorporated that keep the moves safe and effective. Now sticking with legs, we also have to be very careful with two other machines, leg extensions and hamstring curls. Again, very popular machines in the gym. But think of these moves as the same as we have with the others. You are locked into a position of isolation. Your movement is therefore very specific and somewhat compromised. Now, there is some true benefit to using these machines when you're rehabbing an injury or when isolation makes sense for other reasons. But from the perspective of building your leg muscles, these machines should be avoided. The moves are not very functional. Just look at the position you're in when you're doing them. They put unnecessary stress on your knees due to the isolation. And when you do more natural moves, stress on the knees is usually accompanied with stress on the hips. The combination of these two leads to less isolation and less likelihood for injury. And as we mentioned, squats and lunges are far more effective and safe for leg development and strength. Finally, ab machines. There are various machines that you sit in, set up the adjustable arms and seat, and set the weight for the exercise. For the most part, these ab machines are a complete waste of time. And like with the other moves, have the exponential potential to actually injure your lower back. When sitting in these machines, your body is once again locked into a static position. When doing the ab moves, your body is unable to follow its natural pass as it would outside of this machine. The machine sets the path, not your body. And the machine is also less effective as the other machines we've already discussed. For abs, the real target is your entire core. That is the entire family of ab muscles, your side oblique muscles, as well as your back. They all work in unison and stabilize your body for all movement. They are literally the connection between your upper body and your legs. When you do free motion movements, you not only lessen the impact for injury, but tend to engage many of the core muscles at the same time. Just as nature intended, always think of your core as 360 degrees of stabilization. Core exercises target all 360 degrees and keep the movement natural. The ab machine, absolutely not. Check out this video for more tips and tricks and we will see you next time.